Welcome to Meanwhile at the Castle podcast. I'm Queen Emily. I'm Queen Deborah, And we are queens of our castles, keeping the domestic arts alive. This is episode 65, and today is November 1st, and we're back. November 1st. <laughs> October, the best month of the year. So good. So today we are going to have some finished, well, we'll have life update, some finished objects, some works in progress. We will have a Kindness is Like Sugar segment by Deborah, and then we will have a little bit of shop news, and it'll be awesome. Yay! So what's been going on, Deborah? Really, really big news. Halloween is over! Yay! <laughs> is that big news? <laughs> <laughs> Never been a huge fan of Halloween, just in case you didn't know. <laughs> this year I actually planned... I was going to be, we were going to have a whole family theme. It was going to be Peter Pan. Jason was going to be Captain Hook. I was going to be Mermaid from Mermaid Lagoon, Nadia Tinkerbell, Ella, Wendy Darling. In the end, that really happened. I put on half the mermaid costume so I could hand out candy. I was going to set up a whole thing and the weather was going to be bad. In the end, it was good. It was. It was so beautiful. So we went out back and watched a movie. We had had created like an outdoor theater screen projector all that and we watched dune so that was our I celebration seen it yet i want to see that um so that that was really fun and the weather was really nice but the biggest news of all is that i have mastered at home hot wings <laughs> i really want to try them because then i can tell you if you've actually mastered them or not <laughs> well in my opinion i have <laughs> In my opinion, I have, because I have spent the last week trying all of the wings all over the place and made myself really ill in the process <laughs> to the point where I now don't think I can eat meat for a while, any, any meat. Oh, man. So it doesn't really matter that I mastered the hot wings because yes, I won't eat them again. But you have a sister who would remember, because the real reason I want you to do that is just so I can eat them. <laughs> And I don't fry them. They're only baked. But I like it better than the fried ones. So, Excellent. Okay. Everybody's going to ask how I do it. Okay. Nobody's going to ask, but I'm pretending everybody's going to ask. Just tell us. Okay. No, I don't really want to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> Make a video for my fairy tale chronicles because that seems very fairy tale like. Because <laughs> that's gone over really well. I have like a backlog of eight videos that need editing <laughs> from like spring <laughs> yeah <that's, laughs> with all that extra time all that extra around, time you have i will do that no <laughs> no okay anyways but, how about you <laughs> so big news in our house my daughter aria is engaged yay <laughs> and because we're crazy i'm we're the doing, maid of honor you're the aunt of honor <laughs> okay fine i was calling it the maid of honor because <laughs> And because we're crazy, her wedding is on December. Well, it's the first week of December. So we're going to plan a wedding in less than a month and a half, <laughs> which is fun. Can you know, done. it's Can great. It's great. We are excited and we're so, we love the Michael, the man she's marrying is great. They're awesome together. And it's just kind of how our family rolls. We like to mm -hmm. just... Throw caution to the wind and do crazy things. I think that's one thing that COVID has taught us is you don't have to do things the way everybody has always done them. Like yep. you just kind of do your yeah. own thing in your own way. Yep. And it's just fine. Yep. So it's going to be, ex we're really excited for them. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of what the brain, what's the, <laughs> I don't even have the word for the it. Brain Space pack. is being used for <laughs> right now. Yep. Yep, now, be. I want to be clear. I've known for a while that this was going to happen. So later on, when I show you some projects, they've been in the planning for a while. <laughs> for a while. <laughs> yeah, this is not a surprise. It's just now you can finally share it. Yes. 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 It is exciting. Yep. Very fun times. And you know what? I am loving. You were mm -hmm. saying October. Normally, we have like... A week of fall and it goes here. straight to winter yeah we have like summer fall ish and then winter like we have this much fall mm. we've had like a you, month of fall it's been a gorgeous gorgeous october you know what it's made it so i actually love fall again i haven't liked it because it's like oh 
you blink, you miss it, and now it's winter, and I don't. And normally, because of that, I start listening to Christmas music very early on. Mm -hmm. Because, first of all, I love Christmas music, and it seems a shame to relegate it to only, like, you know, three and a half weeks of the year. And second of all, it I feels it feels wintry and cold, and I'm mm -hmm. like, hey, let's get the cheer. But I actually turned Christmas music on today, because it's officially allowed in our family, yes. now that it's after Halloween. And I was like, I'm not ready for this yet. I did I the same thing. I actually want to keep listening to Frank Sinatra mm -hmm. and Natalie Cole and Ella Fitzgerald oh, and ha very Harry Connick Jr. Song. Yes, all of those. Yes. I have a song that I can only listen to in the fall. Which one? And it's it's by Natalie Cole uh -huh. and it's medley. Yes. Called Sentimental. No. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what it's called, but I know which one you're talking about. The autumn leaves. Yes, I, I, I just pulled it up just barely. Why can I not remember? Oh, it's name? so good. Anyways, that one mm -hmm. I turn on again and again and again. It's so, so good. Oh, yeah, love it. All right. <sighs> well, let's get into the knitting and all the projects. Yes. So, besides chicken wings. Yes, th yes, that is important too, though. Let's talk finished objects. Okay. Okay. I'm going to start. Okay. Okay. So, what do I want to show first? I'm going to show this hat. I cast this on right after our last podcast. I just got in the mood because it's fall to start making smaller projects. Yes. Isn't that a funny thing? You know what? I do hats every single year, this time of year. That's yeah. always a thing. I'm just like, I've I been like on sweater, hats. sweater, sweater, sweater in my brain. And then as soon as it gets cold, I go, ooh, I want to make socks and gloves and hats and scarves and mm -hmm cowls and stuff. Anyway, so I made this hat. Basically, I just had some of these. Two of these are my colorways. This is Stone Table and this one is, um, hold on, what's it called? Can't help you because I'm really terrible with that. Oh, come on, brain. I'll think of it in just a minute. It's com I told you, wedding is the only thing that fits in here right now. Um, anyway, these were just all scraps that I had. And I think I had about, I don't know, less than 50 grams of each one of these. Um, probably close to 50 grams of this navy and so I just wanted to make something with them and so I made this little plaid hat I didn't have a pattern but I can tell you this is DK weight and I cast on 120 stitches and I did the rib in a size a US size five it took me just a minute was it a five or a four it was a size five needle. And then I did the body of a hat in the seven. That is not right. It was four and six. It was four and six. So a US size four for the brim and then a six for the body of the hat. And it's stranded color work. And so I just made the, a little plaid and I love how it turned out. It's um, very fun. And it's a nice, it's very slouchy. And this will be a gift knit, a gift for Christmas probably. So anyway, I think I made it way too deep. If I were to do it again, I would end it here, like end the color work here and just have it be a little more fitted and a little less. You gotta put it on, let's slouchy. see. Oh, but it'll mess up my hair. Mm. It's a problem with hats. You gotta like, once you put them on, you, you leave yeah. them on. So I think it's a little too, because it's color work, it's got more like body to it. So I think it's a little too slouchy with the color work. Does that make sense? Okay, I got you. Actually, this is pretty cute. It's cute on you. Okay. There. Anyway, so but that was pretty fun. It was a fun knit. I really enjoyed it. And I just want to do more color work. I like making hats. I've I made a couple recently, so but I was just realizing so we don't need any more hats. I know. That's but they're so good as Jason this. needs hats. Jason, Jason needs, hats. needs hats. But then you have to knit gray I and black and blue. blue and bluish gray and gray blue. <laughs> the thing about hats is lots of people like hats. Like yeah. if you knit shawls for people, not, not everybody. everybody's going to wear a shawl, but almost everybody likes a hat. So yeah. it's a good one. Yeah, that, that was the sad realization because I was talking with Ella and I'm like, oh, she had gone through her room. It was her birthday and we got her a new bed. Okay, she wants to have her room look like a cross between the Jungle Cruise queue and the Indiana Jones ride. I love it. Okay, so she wanted a new bed uh, because hers was too girly frilly. 
and um he's just gonna fall <laughs> so when she was doing that she's going through all of her clothes so she had out all of her hand knit hats and i was just like oh and look at that one and that one and that one and i'm like do you need any more she's like no okay so i don't either <laughs> but i'm still gonna make myself more i don't have a full range of colors so that's the thing I've got well to, to me it's like socks do i need more hand knit socks no not right <laughs> now i don't i mean eventually they'll get worn out you know but someday yep and besides i'm, not, I'm gonna keep knitting them so <laughs> I, might as well. I think what i want to do are more um fingerless gloves mm. fingerless mittens and gloves Wait, did I just say that two of the same thing? Yes. Fingerless gloves, fingerless <laughs> mittens, and gloves. I meant to say some mittens. Fingerless gloves, mittens, and gloves. So I go. want to make some of those for me. Okay. Lovely. How do we get on that tangent? I don't know. Hats. Hats. And this time of year, you just want to knit them. Yes. Yeah, it was just sad that I didn't need it to make any more, but I'll still make more anyways. Find somebody yeah. who needs them. All right. I have a fabulous finished object. I have to finish this okay. last two stitches. Okay. Okay. This one has been in the making for a while here. So good. I started this back in the summer. And so now I finally can share it. And I'm so excited. Okay. Are you ready? You ready? I'm ready. Oh, you have yours all fancified. <laughs> okay. Just... Ready? Here we go. One, two three ah. <laughs> okay so cute if you follow me on instagram then you will have seen this last week um i posted these socks so i have to show you if you have followed us for a little while you may have seen my lucky star socks mm -hmm. and that one features a really fun heel design and this one does too a little gingerbread man on the heel of the sock. Oh, how adorable. So cute. <sighs> Love it. So um, this is very simple because it is done with slips or uh, duplicate stitch, not intarsia. Um, and so I've done intarsia on heels before and I just found I didn't enjoy doing it. Um, and this is simple because it also reinforces the heel at the same time because you have double thickness here. And I'm going to show you because everybody's going to say, oh, it looks like such a mess on the inside once I weave everything in. I'll show you the inside of mine so you can see that that doesn't even matter. Here's the inside of mine. So doesn't even matter. Um, I don't have any knots though. That's one thing. You don't mm -hmm. want knots because knots on your heel and your shoe does not feel great. But... Um, this is called the Gingerbread Dreams Sock, and it features a new sock set that I am coming out with, and I will show that at the end. But this pattern is going to be releasing on November 4th, so this week, and um, I'm working currently on making a little video of how to... Um, Perfect your tension for colorwork socks because that's the thing that holds most people back is they are afraid that it's going to be too tight to get over their heel. And I've got a few tips for that. So I'm just going to share a couple of tips for that. So I'm going to show you how my tension looks on it. Looks lovely, but it has plenty of stretch. So it doesn't look too loose, but it also has plenty of stretch. So um, I'm just really excited about it. So this took, um, about 55 grams of this main gingerbread colorway. And then it took nine grams mm -hmm. of the teal. It's pretty close on that one. Yeah. Yes. So mm -hmm. the socks that will have more. And then it took about 15 grams of the white. Mm -hmm. So, and you can't see Less in than here, five of the pink. And yes, five, yeah, yeah, five or less than the pink. I forgot to say that. Um, mm -hmm. You can't tell in the video here, but um, the white and the pink and the teal are all a sparkle base. Yeah, you can't see the sparkles in it's here. It's too bad because it's so cute and yet subtle. I yep. love it. So I'm just so excited about 
and I designed it with 64 stitches as the, I was calling that the, the regular, not medium, because that's just the average that most mm -hmm. people knit. And then there's one size smaller and one size larger. Mm -hmm. um, and I have not designed this for kids. People have asked me about the Lucky Star socks for children. Um, but I would have to redesign this entire heel, which I may, you know, do that in the future for kids. So we'll, we'll see. We've got to just get this one out. And I knit a pair too, Yay! and I love them. Love them, love them. I'm going to show, this one is on the blocker, but actually it's hiding the fact that the ends aren't woven in. It's not actually <laughs> blocked, but I love it too. I am not quite as tidy as Deborah. You can see I did not... I don't have a nine inch circular needle and I know you used one on yours mm -hmm. and I don't do a very good job with them either. But so I just did magic loop and I feel like it's still, I mean, I have that much of a little kind of, I don't know, place where you can see that the tension wasn't quite as great. Um, but I feel like it still looks just really well, you know, turned out really, really, really good. I loved it. And I was so intimidated by color work socks. I mm -hmm. never made color work socks because I was sure that I wouldn't be able to get them over my heel. And, but I had to make these. So I'm like, <laughs> hey, we're going to figure it out. And they do, they fit great. They fit really, really well. So the whole world of color work socks is now open to me. Thank you to this pattern. He's so cute. I, my, my gingerbread man has blue eyes. I just yeah, kept you don't it with have to do any eyes. But he's so cute. And you know what? I almost did, but then again, brain space. I almost turned one of these into a little girl. Because oh, I thought that would have been so fun to have a boy on one and a girl on the other. That would be. <laughs> so wouldn't that be cute? Anyway. So yeah, fun. you don't have to put eyes on. I almost didn't put eyes on on the gingerbread. And then, because I couldn't get the placement right, I think and then great. I changed the math because it was odd. Oh, uh -huh. Remember, and I changed it up. The first sock um, was the sample sock, and the cuff is different, and mm -hmm. you know, I, I, and then I changed it up for this one, and so I got the math right, and then it looked good. On it there, does look so. good. Mine, I did. I still restitched it. It wasn't that I just left it blank. Like, didn't put a stitch there for the eyes. I just went back over it with the blue again. So because it still... would have been sunken in. Yep, exactly. So anyway, I think he looks cute with the little blue eyes too. But yeah. I like the black. I think I prefer the black. Super fun. I love them. And they're so cute. I cannot wait to, wait to wear them for Christmas. The hard part is I don't feel like I can actually wear these. Why? Because I have to keep them nice so I can always show them. <laughs> Nah, I'm you've got surprised. photos. Put them on your feet. I can do girl. more. I can I can make more of these. But um, one of my testers knit it in completely different colorways, and I was like, Ooh. I don't know how that's gonna look. But I, I'm like, I'm interested to see what what you come up with. And she had this soft, like blue. She just picked colors that looked nice together, so it didn't look like a gingerbread house, but it looked like a fun Christmassy sock. Still, so like, fun. so she did completely different colors, and she kept the same color all the way through the heel flap and then the gingerbread man stood out you know quite a bit more really and it looked cute. really cute so fun and i had really fantastic test knitters fantastic with really good feedback very helpful they were on the ball with paying attention to things and keeping record and notes and so and really good tips and things that they thought oh this might be helpful so that is Awesome. Yes. I have to say these socks are just probably one of the cutest things I've ever seen. I don't think Thank I've you. ever been as excited for a pair of socks <laughs> as I was when I saw her show this pattern. And I just, they're so pretty, Deb. Thanks so much. Designing a pattern is a big deal. And design something like this. I've never seen anything like it before. I love it. So original and so adorable. I'm okay. excited. I'm so excited because this is a perfect way to like kick off our Christmas season. So it really is <laughs> so fun. So you said November 4th. Yep. That is. And this week. they're on your, where are they available? It will be on my, it, well, if you're on Instagram, there's a link to it mm -hmm. in my Instagram bio. And then also I have my Etsy shop which is Candy Shop Yarns, mm -hmm. but you can also go to candyshopyarns.com, which will take you to my Etsy shop. Good. So, so all the places I'm to find I'm hoping to, I, I haven't done it before, but my goal is to also get it on Lovecrafts. That would be so. excellent. 
fantastic. All right. Let's see. That I only had one. I object. have. Wait. I said I had four. One, two, three. What's the fourth one? I don't know. I don't Maybe know. Maybe I only have three. It's only three. Okay. okay. So I have a pair of shorty socks and I've actually worn these. So <laughs> um, anyway, these are, as somebody said, sisters, but not twins. <laughs> yeah. I grabbed just little, little scraps to make these socks. Um, I went through and I found, um, in fact, I found scraps like like little bitty ones, you know, like that big um, to find, to put together. And I just found a bunch of different colors that generally were in the same kind of palette, but um, did not try to make them match. I just tried to keep them looking like they were friendly. So <laughs> friendly. Um, I knit friendly these box. in two days, which was really fun. And um, I have to say on one sock, so on this sock, I did the Stephen West weave as you go method for all my joins. I wasn't thrilled with it in this case. I have seen that used in other cases that work really, really well. But in these socks, it wasn't so great because you can just see, like I'm gonna show you, this is one of the spots where I changed colors and you can see this kind of larger stitch and I get kind of a hole. Um, sorry, I had to actually sew one hole up Hmm. I'm trying to see where's another spot. I think I got most side. of them. Right. Yeah, you can see it. There was like two places where I did it right here. One right there. This is where I had the hole and I had to sew it up. So I wasn't super thrilled with that. So on this sock. Every time we podcast, they have a dance off. I, it's just walking. If you walk back and forth upstairs in my kitchen, which is right above us, it's like creaky and loud. Oh, so I floors, apologize. My floors are so creaky because I want my family to still live here so yeah, they they're do. just gonna make noise <laughs> <laughs> this sock I just wove in my ends like I normally do and they just look so much better yeah. but what I did is once I did a color change I would work like two rows three rows and then I would weave in the ends right then mm -hmm. that's, that's not what actually I, a spot that's what so anyway do. and then it just kept it looking super tidy that's not actually a spot okay, you I did, did um Kay's method for a while. Yes, I do. That, I, I still like that. I use um, Crazy Sock Lady K. She has a tutorial on YouTube um, that shows how she weaves in her ends on her scrappy socks. And it's just really simple. And I mean, I can tell you, I don't know if I do it exactly the way she does it, but I do an overhand, just a one, like one loop knot, which helps all the stitches to kind of tighten up and look crossed over like they do you know, all the yarns are heading in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And then I just go kind of up and down, up and down on with the one yarn, up and down, up and down Do on the other. Do you split your plies? I don't split my plies. she does that, doesn't she? I don't remember her splitting her I watched plies. that one She might, too. with the last stitch, split her, like with the last weave-in, split her plies. I don't have any problems with, her, with that method, though, on my socks. And it works really well. And here, let me find one of the spots. I'll find a color change spot. Here's, here's a color change right here. And so on the inside, you can see it look like that. Because these are the places where I've woven in, oh, up, and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. So one stitch, one end goes this way, one end goes that way. And that's where I wove them in. And so, you know, you can see that on the inside. Here's another one right there. But you don't really notice it and it looks great on the outside. Um, here's that same spot on the outside here. You can tell that I changed color because I've got a little jog there. But mm -hmm. other than that, all the stitches are laying exactly where you want them to. So it works out really well. And I love these socks. So I just knit a rolled cuff. Um, I knit 10 rows and then I did six rows of one by one ribbing. And then I just went right into my, actually I think I knit one plain round and then went right into my heel cuff or my heel flap. I think that what I would like to do is figure out a way to add a tab or like a short row or something. So you get a little bit higher in the back, mm -hmm. but oh my goodness, I love these socks and they were so fun because they actually used up scraps. 
Because you know how scraps multiply. We've talked That's about this before. Scraps never end. <laughs> because you use a piece, you know, you have this much, and then you use a lot of it, and so then you have this much, and then you use and some more for a scrappy project. each time it's a little, project. like, less usable. Yes. But yeah. these ones, they're used up. Like, all yep. the way gone. All I mean, of all that's left is your little ends yep. from tying, you know, weaving in and snipping off trimming them down and that's so. how a lot of people use their i mean not that not making socks mm -hmm. but um they use those last little bits in like their granny stripe blankets and mm -hmm. so which is you know, great just, yeah so they can, can use, use up, up every little bit of it and we talked about her before but also um amy noble character crafts mm -hmm. she uses up every last, last. bit mm -hmm in really creative ways i love it mm -hmm. love it so here's the thing i'm gonna say something that might be a little controversial if you have a tiny bit left of yarn you can actually throw it away if you don't want to use it i know but here's the thing <laughs> this is what i think happens to us as crafters sometimes we are queens of guilt yes <laughs> like we feel like we have to save everything and someday I am going to use that. And it piles up around us and we get buried in the little bits that we feel guilty to throw away. Mm -hmm. It's okay sometimes to throw pieces away and be okay with it. Like, but or awesome. use it if you want to tie something up or whatever. Like, however, you don't have to knit every inch of every piece of yarn you ever buy. I'm just going to say that. Okay. Oh, I agree with that. I think that for a lot of us... It's like, these are just too precious yes, to let go. Yes, and I, I get that too, but <laughs> I really do. For a lot of, uh, that's how I am with um, fabric scraps, is mm -hmm. like the guilt part. Mm. But eventually I'm like, I just can't, I, I can't keep on trying to find creative ways to use all of this up because they just get smaller and smaller and smaller yes. and harder to use. And so, and I created a lot of scraps when I was doing the project bags, especially oh, the bet. notions pouches. Oh man, I had so many scraps that it was overwhelming. Okay, okay. I don't have any more finished objects. I do you have any more? Don't you said you have had any. one more, but I don't see. Anything. I know I don't remember what it was. Okay. So, oh no, it? yes I do, yes I do, yes I do. It's this. Oh yeah, my pumpkin. <laughs> So I forgot to show you these last time, but I made these two sugar baby pump sugar baby. Yeah. Sugar baby pumpkins. These are also Deborah's pattern. I love this one. This is my favorite. Isn't it so cute? I designed these to use up scraps. Yep. <laughs> and they're so great. This one I think I used four strands of thing. Yeah, three or four. It four. Looks like it. Four strands. And this one I used five. Um, and I went up a needle or Anyway, I don't know, something like that. It's been Throw a while. bunch of scraps together. Use Deborah's pattern. She tells you how to do it. But I love it. <laughs> Although, here's my problem. I thought I had more cinnamon sticks and I don't. So this little guy just gets a leaf. <laughs> but anyway, they're just so cute. And this has that hedgehog fibers. Oh, gold yes. rush. Is it gold rush? It's a uh, or fool's gold, gold. Fool's gold. That's what it is. I love this color so much. Anyway, it's just so pretty. So anyway, that was fun. I also have a little garland, but honestly, it's kind of hard. It's right up there. You can't see it. <laughs> it's not oh, that exciting. I'll it's okay. To, I'll have to go get a little screenshot. We'll see if we can get a screenshot of my fall garland that I made. It's just, I, cro I crocheted um, little maple leaves and oak leaves and put them together. Another fun way to use up scraps. It was. Yep. And I just held different to strands together. Yeah, we'll try and do that. So that was pretty fun. So those are my finished objects. I think that's everything I've got. Okay. Well, yep. let's let's go into works in progress. Excellent. And on the scrappy side of things, I'll share progress on my um, stashed eye raglan. This bag holds all the rest of my scraps. I have been on a mission. That's all your to, scraps? You, yeah. Well, okay. I have some that are a more neutral and don't have much color to them. So like my cream soda colorway, or if it's uh -huh. like beige or really pale, I don't, I don't have that in here, but I have been working on using scraps. So I've been making scrappy socks. I did the pumpkins so that I could like, cause you can just hold whatever together. Yeah to use it up and use up small amounts, bigger amounts, whatever. So 
I wanted to use up my scraps. So I have Stash Dive Raglan by Summerly Knits. I'm trying to find the pattern here. I talked about it last time. Um, and it is a raglan sweater where it has an option for it to be a crew neck or two different turtleneck options where it's tighter or looser. This is the looser one and that's what I plan to make so is cute. that. Um, it is knit bottom up and you hold one strand, well I'm holding one strand of bare uh, DK, DK weight yarn with um, a strand of fingering. And the fingering are the scraps that I'm using. Mm -hmm. And so she gives you tips on how to kind of like use your scraps, how to divide them into different groupings. And she had some that were like a little bit more like the mottled speckled variegated that weren't quite as bright. And then your solid, really vibrant, dark or bright, you know, super bright ones. And I had done that initially and now it's just whatever because <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't really matter. So I'm ready oh, now no. to do sleeves. So one of the things that she did, and I wanted to do that, was she used one colorway for the ribbing, for the um, bottom ribbing, the wrists, and then for the cowl neck. But I didn't have enough of any one that I wanted to, like a lot of them were a little too bold. So I thought I will do, one for all of this ribbing and then one for the wrist and then one for the neck. Um, now the whole purpose of this is to use up scraps. So in order to do that, I went and dyed some yarn. <laughs> <laughs> Famous last words, <laughs> use up the scrap. Because I didn't have one that I thought, oh, I, I really want it to still look good with this one or, you know, like anyways, so I dyed up just a mini. And I love this one so much. This one is going to be a new colorway in my shop because I really love this one. I don't have a name. I don't know yet, but really like this one. So this one is going to be for probably the wrists and I dyed up some other ones. But what I tried to do was make it really kind of gaudy, but I don't even really like this one, but it will look great. Oh, it will. Blended in. <laughs> Cause I, I didn't have quite enough that were too like bold. So, so I died, <laughs> I did that. Um, anyways, so here's, here's the bag of scraps that I have. Oh, that's everything I have. And I will probably not even come close to using that when I'm done with this sweater. <laughs> You have to immediately cast on a second one. Gonna have to, <laughs> gonna have to knit a lot more socks. <laughs> probably gonna do this with hat. That's probably something I'll do next is hat and some other things because I just like the process. It's so, so pretty. With this, um, I add in little blips here and there of other colors. You don't have to do that. You can do whatever you want. It would be cute to do the same thing and just do stripes. It's just that helps make it look not so stripey. Um, it helps to break things up a bit and look more mar marled, I guess, because I'm going to just lose so many stitches here off the needle because in here, I tried to break it up quite a bit, but I didn't break it up quite as much down here. So it'll just look, it'll look kind of crazy and fun, but this is one that I can actually see that I'd wear all the time. This is, this is a really good, like bundle up mm. cozy it's so one. cute too and i am knitting except for i didn't on these last two so you can't you can't use that as an example but i've talked about how i've knit them in as i go but i am knitting over the stitches so i hold the yarn together and i just weave the yarn in as i am knitting i don't know if there's a technique for it but it's just knitting over the mm -hmm. it's kind of like when you catch your floats in color work how you have yarn in each hand and you catch the float with one it just kind of do that's that. really similar to what Stephen West's video yeah. is so that's how I have been mm -hmm. doing that um the only time I don't do that is if I'm doing a really short bit 
because it takes more yarn to do that because you've got to hold it, tension it in your hand and wrap it around than to just use a needle and weave it in. So if I'm just doing a really short bit, I just knit it in and go weave the ends in. But I just do it as I go so it doesn't feel like this overwhelming process with so many ends. So it really doesn't bother me in the least. So, um, yeah, just I'm trying to think, is there anything that I, I didn't, tell about this that I think is important to know. So you're knitting the mm. sleeves next. So you knit the sleeves next and then you join it together with the, the body. This is like underarm here on either side. So um, this is all super wash yarns, so it's going to grow. So I've definitely mm. made sure to take that into account because when you do bottom up, it's hard to know exactly how it's going to fit. When you do top down, you can try it on and kind of see. This way it's mm -hmm. kind of hard to, to really try it on. So I'm just trying to go by measurements mm -hmm. and um, just taking into account that it will grow 10 to 20 percent. <laughs> so anyways, it's all bunched up on the needles here so it's hard to see because I actually have done um, some positive ease on mm -hmm. it. I've done not a ton, but a good amount. I wanted it to not be too fitted because I want it to be squishy and cozy. But cute. now that I've finished my gingerbread socks, <laughs> I can do other things. <laughs> so You can have a life. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to preserve my knitting hand strength <laughs> for what's needed most. And mm -hmm. so... Now I'm, I'm excited to do that. Go back to my sweater. Awesome. 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 All right. Let's talk about this one. Yay. This one's fun. So this is the almost finished version of the shawl that I cannot remember the name of. It didn't have a name on it. No, it's Twinity. Oh, it did? Oh, there was a different one that didn't Twinity have Twinity shawl. It doesn't have the person that it's by on That's it. That's right. Every but time I hear Twinity, I just think of Mel. Melwidge. <laughs> which is what this shawl is for. <laughs> this is shawl is Aria's wedding shawl. And I haven't been allowed to say that for a while. But anyway, this is what the pattern looks like. Um, this is, of course, showing it in a gradient. But isn't it pretty? And... This is what it looks like all bunched up on my needles and not able to see anything. Can you me to help hold anything? Uh, it's just so bunched up that you okay. can't really see it. I'm really close to the end though. Oh, it, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Oh, it's so pretty. You can start to see the pattern. And just started and right I'm there. in the beading section now. Um, I actually didn't do the first two rows of beading because... We hadn't decided to beat it. We were. I was going to knit this in a plain, this plain white with a narrow pink border around the edges. And that is what the plan has been for all along. But then Ari and I had another little chat about this because the idea, and I think I probably talked about this last year when I was working on my daughter-in-law's wedding shawl. Um, the idea that I have with the wedding shawl is that you have it for your wedding and then... Um, when you have your babies in our religion, we do something called a baby blessing. And it's maybe kind of similar to a christening. It's a name and a blessing. It's um, something that we do in our church. And we tend to do it when babies are roughly, you know, a month, two months old. And um, anyway, then you use the shawl for their blanket with when they, when they do, when they get their blessing. And so, so after we talked one. about that, we decided not to do pink because... Yes. We didn't want pink on it. So that's when we decided to add the beading instead, which I'm really happy about. The beads are going to give it such a nice drape. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to just show it. It's got this beautiful textured area up here, and then it goes into these gorgeous leaves. And I am, I have three right side rows to go. So that's oh, really? how close we are. Now, each row at this point, I mean, they're such long rows. This is a lace weight shawl. So, I mean, it's just a lot of knitting. I know this is really hard for you to even see what I'm showing. Here's the idea. That's how big it is. There's <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of stitches on there. And with the beading, sorry, I almost poked your eye out, by the way. Um, I <laughs> with the beading, each row is taking me, you know, three hours of concentrated, hmm. focused knitting. 
um, just because it's slow going to work everything and then put the beads on. The way that I am doing the beads, I have the beads in this little container. These are just a glass seed bead. They have, um, they're clear with a silver core. core. So you get that sparkly, which is really hard to see, but those are the beads. And I have this teensy tiny, teensy little crochet hook. This is a steel hook that's a size 12, but this is one of my grandma's hooks. I was hooks. just going to ask. Those. Yeah, this is our grand, one of our grandma's hooks. It says it was USA 10 cents on it. Isn't that cute? 10 cents for that. Um, and so I can put four beads on the, well, I can put five, but I'm working an even number. So it works for my brain to put four beads on at a time onto that shaft of that crochet hook. It's so tiny. <laughs> so, and then you basically, once you've worked your stitch, this one, you're definitely putting the beads on after you've worked the stitch. So you work the stitch and then you pick up that stitch off your needle and you basically crochet the bead onto it. So it goes over both of the legs of the stitch and then you put it back on your needle. So it's very time consuming and I tend to sit with the crochet hook like this yep. in my teeth the whole time. Um, but we're really getting there and it's gonna be stunning. The yarn for this is Juniper Moon Farms Findley is the base and it is 798 yards to 100 grams. It's color 23. Oh, snow. And it is 50% merino wool and 50% silk. So that's the yarn that I'm using. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this one, the magic will happen mm -hmm. when you block it. It will. Because you're like, oh, mm -hmm. trying to hold up. First of all, you know, it's on bunched on the cord. But, even but all after this lace, that, I mean, yeah. it's going to open up like... It's just huge. I just remember these are going to be scallops. Basically, they'll come yeah. up like that. So I still remember the flowers for Yvonne. Good job, Tab. Look um, at you. Yeah, I actually <laughs> remembered something for a change. <laughs> no. But that one, as you're working on, I'm just thinking, oh, this is so pretty, so pretty. And then when it was done and you blocked it, it was like magic. It really is. There oh. are some things that while you're knitting them, like socks and like your sweater, you can mm -hmm. see. That, that blocking is going to give it that final finishing to it. It kind of like smooths it, evens a bit. Mm -hmm. All your stitches kind of tidy up. and Yeah, up. they just kind of settle into place. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking lace. about lace like this, it's a complete, it's a transformation when you block yeah, things. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. why also um, like acrylic doesn't block as well. I made a project recently mm -hmm. with some acrylic and tried blocking it, you know, like steam blocking it. There's some different mm -hmm. ways of doing it and it just never works quite as well. But when you're using like a natural fiber mm -hmm. like this. <sighs> it is, it's magic. Yeah, it's, it's so nice. So I, I didn't know that the very first time I made um, any, it was actually with crochet, but it was like mm -hmm. a lace lacy project that I made for somebody and I made that one with acrylic and I tried blocking it and I didn't know like the proper way to block acrylic mm -hmm. um really is best with like steam mm -hmm. steam blocking yeah not so soaking I it. soaked it and pinned it out and it didn't look any better and it was so disappointing because <laughs> all of that work and I was like oh it, it's okay you know it was just so disappointing yeah so that's the thing when you're using um, a natural fiber, it just. This is going to be an interesting divine. one to block too because of how curved it is. It's definitely one that is, it, it'll, it'll end up having like the ends will kind of coil, yeah. you know, because it's this, this shape here. Um, because of that. It's harder to use blocking wires and things. Yes. So it pins. is going to be all pinning. A lot of pinning. We probably won't. I'll, I'll do it on our bed and we won't sleep in our bed that night. <laughs> oh, it's lace. It will dry not, really it's fast, not summer, actually. Though. <laughs> no, I'll have to put fans on it. But yeah, anyway, it's mm -hmm. fun stuff. Fun, fun, fun. So that's okay. coming along. Sorry, let me move I'll this. I'll grab another way. project. It's fun. Okay, I showed this one last time. Let me get the pattern out. But I didn't have the actual name of it, so I have it this time. Okay, 
I'm using my Candy Crush sock set. Oh, and I just love it so much. So cute. Love it. Um, I had set this one aside a lot of the time when I dye yarn. I think, oh, well, if I want it, I'll go dye it. And then I never do. Mm. But this one, I'm like, nope, set it aside. Have to have a set. Um, and then I decided on a pattern by Summer Lee Knits and I bought it on Etsy and it was actually a collection of these three socks and it is called Easy Beginner Basic Colorwork Fair Isle Sock Knitting Pattern Collection. <sighs> Number three. <laughs> <laughs> the sock I'm doing is the third, the third sock in the pattern if I remember correctly. So, um... I'm using this pattern up to here or down to here um, because I didn't want to do a short row heel, uh, a slip, slip, slip stitch heel flap and gusset. It just fits much better on my high arches. Oh my <laughs> and doing this heel flap and gusset means that doing continuing the color work through it doesn't really work very well. You'd have to work that in with the ink, the decreases going along here and trying to work it around this way. And it would miss that part there. Mm -hmm. So I didn't think that that would look very nice. So I just ended it here. Which is great. Um, and then I was thinking, oh, I could put some of this texture, you know, this pattern in at the end or whatever. But I actually just like seeing this yarn here. So um, I knit this pair for me and what I really like is this one has a 60 stitch cast on. <sighs> Thank you because that's what I use and um, it's the smallest size and I think that most people they would knit like the 69 stitch because color work tends to be tighter but I don't have a problem with my tension. So 60, 60 stitches still feels just fine for me. So I really like that. She has a couple of patterns where she's done that, where it's a little bit smaller because the tension you may need to adjust, but worked for me. So I like that. I've got the first sock done and I've started the second sock and I've just started the color work. And this is one of the things that I really like is I like using nine inch circulars for the color work. Part. It's just so much easier. There's a couple of other ways you can do it, but to me, that is the easiest way to get the best tension for it. And I only use it for the color work portion, and then I switch back um, because I do like magic loop. But this is really just the easiest way for me. So I've got the second sock started. I adore so, that colorway so much. Thank you. It's so beautiful. So I purchased that on Etsy and that was, what was it on Etsy? Well, I know on Instagram it's summer.lee.knits. So that's where I found her in the link to her Etsy shop. And she has a lot of different patterns. <laughs> She's very prolific. Yes, and they're all just so fun. And she's she the same designer scraps. as the sweater. She is. Right? Yes, yep. that's how I found the sweater as I was looking at the socks. Excellent. Okay. Okay. My next work in progress is another pair of scrappy shorty socks. So these are so aren't they fun and bright? Bright and happy. I love them. So I have this tin. I have to show you this. When we went on our trip in May, we went to Hershey, Pennsylvania, and we did the, at Hershey, at the Hershey factory, we did the design your own candy bar thing. Oh, so you wait, can, well, you can go to the Hershey factory okay. and you can pay to do this tour of their factory and you design your own candy bar. So like you pick what kind of chocolate you want in it, Ooh. what kind of add-ins you want in it, all that kind of stuff. And then you get a design like um, a wrapper. It's like a sleeve that goes over the tin. And the candy bar comes in this tin that I have right here. And so I kept the tin. And, and that was really fun, by the way. It's, I want to hear what did you Let's make? see. Mine was milk chocolate. And it had pretzels. What did it have in it? Hold on. I know. I tell you pretzels, toffee bits. <laughs> 
and there was something else in it. There were three things. I would have to have nuts or some kind of caramel, but the toffee works. I might have done nuts of some, I honestly can't. I remember the pretzels and the toffee. And then it had like rainbow sprinkles on top. It was really cute. I love anyway, it. Anyway. I didn't and so, know that you could do that. It was really fun. Um, yeah, so we did that. It was, we had a great time there. Um, anyway, so I figure in Deborah's theme of candy <laughs> that I would put together a little candy box. And so I just gathered my little, um, you know, treats that I have in my scrap box. Same thing as I did the other one where I just gather up all my little like tiny bits. Like I said, like this one's a really teensy little one. That's going to be like a couple grams there of yarn. And I've got my notions in my Altoids tin. And then I just have that and it's so easy to stick it like in my bag or something. Isn't that just cute? That is really fun. So that's what I did with those blue and green ones that I showed earlier. And that's what I'm doing with these. So I finished the first one. And this one I did 12 rows of stockinette on the rolled cuff. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that made any difference, but they still fit really What well. did you do on the last one? 10. I just added a couple. I just did, I, cause I still, I don't want it high. Mm -hmm. And I really love how the others fit. But I did everything else is the same. And then I did that. And now I am. Oh, la la. I just finished the heel and have picked, Are you gonna picking make up these stitches. Match? So right now, right now like they're matching, but this is gonna match and that, but but that's as far as it's gonna match. And then the from here on out, it will be again themed. Okay. So like this yarn, I don't have any more of that one. And I won't have enough of this to finish the whole toe. So my plan is to stripe the this one. Sorry. Oh, that was from the Lucky Star. Actually, no, no this not. one is that's... from my, um, it's my bookworm colorway yeah, and I yeah. have a sweater out of it. I'm going to stripe these two together, probably at for the... part of the toe, you know, oh, just okay. to give it that feeling. But I have the, the pinks and that yellow still. Yeah, and so, this one kind of. Uh -huh, yeah. Go, they, yeah, they just. So I on. just, I won't do these in the same order. So it looks more purposefully mixed up. So anyway. Scrappy socks are so fun. I might even just do a straight up yellow or pink toe instead. <gasps> That's probably what I'll do. Love it. So anyway, I had, I, I thought I had more of this one these are so than I did. Cute. I think that's my favorite. Aren't they fun? These, this color combination is so fantastic. <laughs> so I just like bright. Things. I'm going to keep doing this. Once I finish these, I'm going to fill this tin up with more little bits. And this is just going to be my scrappy shorty socks. I love it. Thing I love because it. I need more shorty socks. That's one thing I have only a couple pair. Mm -hmm. I think I have three pair of shorty socks, which you know, that you only have three pair of hand knit shorty socks. How sad for you. But <laughs> I got, I have like, I got, <laughs> I got, I got me like <laughs> probably, you know, a bajillion other pairs of socks. So <laughs> I was going through my hand knit socks yesterday and just looking at my, my stash of them and thinking, Oh, look how far I've come. I know. I'm so happy. To some of the early ones yeah. too, though. <laughs> well, I've pulled out some that now are in a drawer for my kids to use as they like, um, mm -hmm. to enhance their collection, but there I'm working on stuff for them, but they don't like all of the, the colors that I like that I have mm -hmm. a huge assortment of yarn ready to use. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to knit the mm -hmm. yarns I want to knit. That's all my sock yarn <laughs> yeah. right there. See, the thing is, though, your your girls would like those. That's true. <laughs> my girls yeah. are like, oh, yeah, it's okay. You know, but for me, I'm like, well, I guess I need 30 more socks. Yeah. <laughs> um, there was something I was going to say. Oh, yeah, when, my, when I was first knitting socks, I have some funny pairs in there. I have a pair of socks that I knit out of, like, single ply just 100 percent merino single ply yarn but mm -hmm. it, you know super wash merino it's they stretch they're so big you know what you know you knit me it a pair out of single ply uh -huh. like there's they still are going strong those me. those single ply though had nylon in them oh yours didn't mine doesn't okay and it's anyway they're just so big and they were early on so i probably mm -hmm. made them too big i don't know anyway so I've got some of those. I've got some funny ones. But, oh, dang, I was going to bring down that sock of Richard's. I need to remember next time to talk about darning. Oh, yes. The Help me remember. Darn <laughs> we'll talk okay. about darning socks next time. All right. I have been wanting to get 
some sample knitting done. Um, and I thought I'm going to find some sample knitters and I'm like, I just need some swatches really is what so I samples need. of your color ways. of my color ways. Mm -hmm. And, um, then I, I stumbled across an account, um, and it's Bab Knits, B-A-B-K-N-I-T-S on Instagram. And she was doing sock tubes. And I had somebody else who was local here who was doing sock tubes. She moved and I kind of hadn't kept in touch. So I don't know if she's still doing that. But um, her, her business is actually Clayville Fiber Arts. And... So I was talking with her about like trying to figure out sock tubes because I know that the tensioning can be tricky to figure out. And so I sent her just some yarns that I had for her to like sample some, some stitch counts and tension. And so she spent some time like ex experimenting with it for me and did like a 54 stitch cylinder that was a looser tension and then she did a 64 stitch cylinder that was quite tight i loved that mm -hmm. because i really love a nice tight oh look at that this That's one so was satisfying. this one was my shirley temple colorway and this one was um just a minute not fizzy lifting drinks maybe it was don't remember anyways um another one of my colorways from from a collection that i did a couple years ago anyways so after getting those back i sat on that for a while and finally got back in touch with her and was like kate i want to just start getting some made so she i cannot believe how fast she was oh my goodness so i sent her this one which is nowhere mm. to go but up and then I sent her, and she did two separate tubes for me, and I like that so I don't have to separate them out. And then this one was Neapolitan ice cream. This is the waste yarn, so I have to remove that because I'm going to make these into socks. So Neapolitan ice cream, and then this one is my animal or circus animal cookies. I love that one. And Minnie's sweet shop. And right here, this is what I'm doing with it, is I had her on a couple of the colorways do a hung hem um, cuff, but just on a, on a couple of them. And then- so It's like a fold over cuff, is that what it's like? Yep, so it's, it's essentially like doing a, like a fold over brim on a hat, mm. but for your sock. And it's just kind of a nice smooth look to it. And then I added in a toe and an afterthought heel. So I've got the heel and it's ready to Kitchener right now. That's awesome. And this one is Jose <laughs> from, your... from my Tiki Room collection. <laughs> but you know what? I sent him because I thought, I want to know what they look like. And when I opened this one up, I went, oh, it looks so good. <laughs> so I needed it as much as customers. So this one, I just need to Kitchener the heel and it is ready to go. And I've got the other one. Um, I've got a stitch marker here a progress keeper here marking where i need to pick up stitches for that so i am just working on adding in cuffs heels and toes some of them don't have cuffs so i need to add in the ribbing um but i'm just i've got a stack here to do so if you need sock tubes like you're, you're like i i just want some socks for christmas but i don't have time to knit enough of them very reasonably priced She'll divide them into two. She can do the hung hem, so you don't have to do a cuff if you don't want to. Um, yeah, really fast. So I would just contact her at Bab Knits on Instagram, or if I don't think she had a website on Clayville, Clayville, Clayville Fiber Arts at Gmail dot com. Oh, I'm just gonna say go to Instagram. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I didn't want to show that just in case she didn't want that shown. I don't know. I didn't ask her. So that's wonderful. So I need to finish these, I but I your... really want to do some DK socks next. I'm just, but I'll have to knit those. I'll have to knit all those. 
That is fabulous. I like that. I've got this nice stash here to just. How tidy is that? That's beautiful. It's very nice and tidy. I know. I love it. Oh, I really love this color. It's so fun. I'm just so. Just well, I'm, it. I'm extra in love with nowhere to go but up. Love yes. that one. Yes. Yes. So cute. So one of the things that I did is I didn't send her a hundred grams. I kept some where I didn't want to do a contrasting cuff heel or toe. So I just had some that I could knit mm, that with. That's a great idea. Now she could do the whole thing and you could just rip off what you need, you know, kind of thing. Doesn't really matter, but that's, that's what I did. But some of these, I do have contrasting ones. So, okay. Oh, excuse me. Okay. You have another one? Yes. Okay, this is a fun one. So, I am making a quilt also for Aria for her wedding. This quilt pattern is a Moda pattern and it is called Charming Stars. And I have one finished block. It's so cute. Isn't that cute? So it's really fun. It's got that star, but it is kind of reversed from what you often see where the star is out of your prints and then the background is the white. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've only finished the one. I am using um, Charm Packs. For this, this is the Strawberry Honey collection. It's a Riley Boyd collection by Gracie Larson. And um, so right now I've been putting together my little block packets basically um, that have all the fabrics. And, you know, I have to like mark my triangles and everything for them. But there's just some really fun, bright... See if I can find some. Aria I picked love, the fabric. Aria picked the fabric out and the pattern. Like this one that's got little bees. Although I have to show you this. Richard looked at these little bees and he said, Are those sheep? And I said, What? They're bees. What it, there's the bee. He could not see it even after I pointed them out. Turn them upside down, and suddenly they'll be the little bodies of sheep with the little black face and the two little black ears. It does. Okay, wait, get closer. Because that's not close enough to see that. So he okay. thought they were little sheep. Now here, his eyesight isn't awesome, but I'm like, what are you talking about? They're bumblebees. <laughs> anyway, so I love this fabric. Um, so we're going, to, I'm, I'm trying to get this entire quilt pieced in the next seven days or so, and then we're gonna hand quilt it. <laughs> get ready, Deborah. <laughs> uh, hand strength, okay, I won't, I won't do any knitting. Nope. <laughs> Our aunt's going to help us. And I love hand quilting. And yes, me too. And we haven't done, put up a quilt and had, all, you know, people get time. together for quite a while in our family. So anyway, that's going to be really fun. And it will have little white board or sashing in between. And um, then just little contrast squares in between as well. It's just going to be so fun and pretty. But it's very bright and summery and aria. I love it. Stars and pink my favorite blocks. Yes. And what is really fun is this white on white. It has little gingham cherries. Isn't that cute? Gingham and polka dot cherries. See? It's hard to see because it's the oh, white and white Oh, that's print. what, okay. So I was looking for a white fabric to go with it. And um, could, oh, it actually shows up better in the camera because of the high contrast. Yes. You can see it. But, oh my goodness, so fun. So that was a good find because it goes along with that theme really well. Super, super fun. My favorite fabric, this is the one we're doing for the back, is the yellow version so of that cute. one with the little hexagons. And, and the sheep. And, and the sheep. <laughs> and the bees or the sheep, however you want to look at it. <laughs> little hearts. Oh, it's just so cute. So fun. So that's my work in progress. I was I was telling Emily how I really love quilts, quilting, mm -hmm. all of that. But by the time I have finished um, like figuring out what pattern design or designing the quilt, yes. shopping for the fabric, washing, pressing, cutting it all out, all the pieces out, I'm done. <laughs> It's a lot. And I haven't even started sewing it together. At that the, point, I'm like, Doing okay. the math for a quilt is a big, like, yeah. it's an undertaking. That's why if you buy a pattern, it is worth it. A lot of people are like, oh, well, I don't need to And this one has a pattern, but it's a pattern for a throw. Yes. And so and you, you wanted to, to do it, it for a, a queen. So you have to refigure out all yep. your math. 
Well, and that's what I did with the last quilt that I did. Um, mm -hmm. So I had to figure out the math all over again because I was making it not a baby size. Mm -hmm. I wanted yep. it to be a twin or a full size. So it just takes takes some more brain power, a lot more brain power. It was good though. Once once I get the the math figured out and I get the fabric purchased, I can just get into a rhythm and, mm -hmm. and just focus in on it. My problem is I can get too hyper focused. And you've got And then to. after a while I'm like, I can't move my legs because I've been sitting in the exact same position like this, leaning over my machine yes. for the past three and a half hours without even looking up, you, you know. Have to get up and move yeah. often and it's it's hard and it, when you're in the zone. And it is a challenge because I have to pace myself so much with my health to try and do all of these things. Yes. So I'm finding that the, the hardest thing is you have to stop when you still feel good. Mm -hmm. And that's really, really hard because you're like, but why do I stop? I feel fine. Yes. But if you don't stop when you feel fine, then suddenly you're really not okay. And it's yes. a very sudden like just a switch that goes off and then you're not okay. It makes me think of like eating. There's a, a like a scale of zero being you're not hungry and you're not full. You're like just right, right in the middle. And then you go down to like negative four and positive four. And you don't want to um, wait till you're negative four, like starving to eat. And you don't want to eat till you're positive for it. Like you should be, yes. you need to wait till you're about negative two and you eat till you're about positive two and stop and like stay in that balance yeah. there. But it's really difficult to do. Most of the time we eat when we're like negative four. Right. And then we hurry up and eat and eat and eat. And then all of a sudden we're feeling like positive <laughs> four. And like, so it's a really good way of describing that. I don't think I've ever put it in that term before. I really like that. So yeah, we'll do that like as a, as a family when we talk about eating, because we're always working on trying to find a healthy balance in a lot of areas in our life. Mm -hmm. And, and I heard that somewhere and I was like, oh, that's, that was something that worked for me. So mm -hmm. we think about that. Um, that's, anyway. that's really hard because it's hard to judge your energy. It's kind of like, we're so used to, you're either okay or you're really not okay. It's hard for us to be, I don't know, because I, I don't want to, it's hard to live a life where you're constantly taking your own temperature, you know, of, yes. of how do I feel right now? How do I feel right now? My husband mm -hmm. said that I need to, he, this is a great idea. I haven't done it yet. We just talked about this on Saturday. He says, you need to set an alarm on your phone for like every three hours, every four hours where it just says like, take stock. And so it just goes off regularly mm. and then you just stop and pay attention. How am I feeling right now? What do I need to do? Do I need to rest? Do I yep. need to, you know, do I need to eat something, drink something? Because I do tend to hyper focus, which is I'm yes. sure contributing to my health issues. That was a tangent that nobody needed, but there you go. <laughs> if that's you helpful to you. No, that's, that's not true because if we go through all of the wonderful comments on our last mm, that's true. video, yes. there's a lot of people that are dealing with the yes. same thing. Yeah, that's true. And um, it can be really easy to feel, well, alone in it, but yeah. also to feel like I look fine. So that is so people hard. think that because you look young and you look healthy, you look fine, mm -hmm. that you can do all of the normal things, mm -hmm. but you can't. And, and so I have that issue with arthritis and with my right. back and a lot of those things that I'll go places and people are like setting up tables for a wedding or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I just have to stand and watch. And they're like, you mm -hmm. can't lift this chair and bring it over here. And like, uh, no, no, actually, actually can't. I can't. And yeah. then instead they're like, wow, lazy woman over there. They probably aren't. But, but that's we what think I they feel are. Right. because they're all working hard and I'm just sitting over here. Okay, I'll get out my knitting, you know, yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. And then you feel also alone or isolated mm -hmm. because everybody's doing these things and you're not or you know I also the other piece of that puzzle is either people saying and maybe I talked about this last time so forgive me either people saying or maybe me thinking they're gonna say it like you were mm -hmm. saying about if you can do a then you are well enough to do b you yes. know so if you can you know go to have a birthday party then you're well enough to 
whatever it is. Volunteer this thing or do this yeah, thing. Yeah, go or and Even volunteer. come to the other thing. It's not even... Right. It's just come to come my Come to party. my party. Right. So whatever it is. But that's not how it works. It's not a mathematical calculation no, when we're dealing with stuff no. like this. So. And it is hard. It is really hard to learn the pacing. And it's hard to deal with those feelings of inadequacy that we have. Where I, I think that's a lot of it. <sighs> it is. And and just like you were saying, I think people are thinking these things. Right. But they may not be. They really... And you know what? Mm -hmm. What if they are? Does that's that... their problem. Does that mean that you should sacrifice your health because they nope. may be thinking something? No. Nope. Nope. But so. it is it is a challenge with invisible illnesses like that. Just yeah. it really can be a, a hard thing. Um, on Wednesday, was it Wednesday? I think it was Wednesday. My husband and I, we were at, anyway, whatever. It doesn't matter what day it was. My husband and I went and did a bunch of errands. I felt so good all day. I kind of did a few things during the day. I went and got fabric for the quilt and, you know, just ran a bunch of different errands. And then we went out to dinner that night. And then we went to the grocery store to buy Halloween candy and we were just walking in and we're all, you know, I'm feeling fine. And we walk in the store. And then as we're standing in the store, I'm like, we need to just pick stuff, just pick it. You know, and I find myself starting to get short tempered. Like, mm -hmm. why are we looking at this? Just grab some candy and let's like, just who go. Who cares? It's just candy. Yeah. And I didn't, it, not making the connection. And by the time we're walking out of the grocery store, I am barely able to walk to get to the car. Mm -hmm. And then in the car, my family is used to seeing this. I look like I'm dead. I literally can't hold my own body up. I'm like flopping over. Um, nobody, nobody can get any reason. I can't communicate with anybody. And we get home and my, my son and my husband, they help me upstairs, help me to get Richard's taking, you know, getting me ready for bed and stuff. And I'm getting in bed and I keep going, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And he's like, why are you apologizing? And I'm like, well, because you're having to do all these things. It's really hard. So just mm -hmm. let people do stuff. But yeah. Anyway, it's a weird life. It okay. is. That was enough of that, wasn't it? See, that's the other thing I do. I go, oh, I need to stop talking about it. Nobody really wants to hear. But it's but okay. It is okay. It's okay. <laughs> and if you need to talk about it again, it's okay if you talk about I it. I probably again. will. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I have one more work in progress. And this right here is my, my special binder. <laughs> Of Tannis Gray patterns. So. Because you're getting a collection. Because I have a collection of them. I don't have all of her patterns. But I have a good assortment in here. That I've purchased of individual ones. And then oh. The Harry Potter one just came out. I just yes. got it in the mail. I was going to bring it. And I didn't bring it. I asked for it for Christmas. I showed great restraint. Because <laughs> <laughs> otherwise I would have just bought it. I know the Disney one is coming out. I pre-ordered both of them. So when as soon as it comes out, I will be getting it. But anyways, so in here is something super special. And I feel very special because I got to start this one early. This one right here. Can you only see that page? Okay. Yep. She released this one recently. It's the Tiki 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 Room Cowl. And uh, I've got it in a basket that I made here. I made myself a matching one. I did a swap with a friend a couple of years ago for Christmas. And I made myself a basket to match. And it has a drawstring liner, but I just tucked the drawstring down in. Um, so here we go. Oh my gosh, right that's now, so cute. I have almost finished the Tiki Gods. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So, um, this one is wider than the, um, the, it's a small world after all cowl that I did a little bit ago. Emily knit one as well. So it's all Emily's fault. Really? I take the credit. I mean the blame. <laughs> it's Emily's <laughs> fault because she made me that cowl and I saw it before and I thought, oh, I want to knit that and never did. And then she knit it and I'm like, that's it. I have to. And so now I'm obsessed with all of Tana's Gray's designs. So um, I have used the Mermaid Lemonade colorway for the base. And then for the um, background color, I have Snow Cone. And these are on my DK Bloom base. And that's similar to what she has in her picture though, you know, it would look cute with so many, so many combinations really there. Um, 
So the next thing are pineapples. But of course what I'm waiting for are the birds. I can't wait for the birds. Can you see I it? think it's the glare from the, yeah, that's better right there. I can't see anything. Okay. Now hold it closer. There you go. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm excited for the birds. So excited. But this will take two skeins, it says on the pattern, of your main colorway mm. and one skein of your background one. So, um... I really like how a lot of her color work patterns use kind of a bold main color and then a, a fun print, yes, like a yes. print, you know what I mean? A I mean, not all speckle. of hers do, but you you don't have to use a speckle and you don't have to sure. use what she has there, but I do like that. It's really Because fun. then you can use a lot of your fun colors. Well, and it does. It looks kind of like floral in the background yes. almost. Yeah. So um, it's going to take me a while though, because this one is wider than the other one and it it's one and... A couple of her pictures I've seen, not of this one, but others that are about the same size, where somebody's actually worn it down over their torso, um, kind of like a cape kind of thing. You made me one mm -hmm. like that, but I ended up wearing it like a cowl, and this mm -hmm. one I may end up wearing, so then you can actually see the design, too. Mm -hmm. My goal was to have this done... And I went to Disneyland so I could take it and take pictures there, but I just couldn't get it done in time, which is fine because it was like a bajillion degrees, so <laughs> I wouldn't have taken a picture anyways. So <laughs> anyways, I'm really excited about that one. I really, I told Tannis that um, she's the reason why I love color work now That's because I've done point. color work before, but I don't know what it is. Hers just unlocked the the fun it unlocked the mystery so it was mm. no longer like challenging like scary intimidating mm -hmm. it was no longer intimidating instead it was just fun mm -hmm. so that's that's what i just really love i i love it love it love it i think a lot of it is a subject matter too i enjoy yes, the subject I'm sure matter. that that helps for sure that's everything i have it's all mine. I just I'm showing. I have. I mean, we have other things that are works in progress, but yeah, we can show those. Most things. of those just haven't had any progress on them. So finish this one. Oh, I good. Kitcheneered good. the heel together. I want to try that on before you leave. Wait, well, wait. this one I did this one a size. That's eight a smaller one. Foot. Not I just am wondering how this fits. That's what I. But want you know. can try on just the tube itself. Oh, that's to true. See, like just mm -hmm. the tube. Um, but she did do it kind of tighter because, like, you know how I like a tighter sock. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like them to be. I'm just snug. interested in that cuff. Yeah. So I'm, you can you can try I think it I'm on. I'm definitely gonna have to have her do some for me. Yeah. So Such a worth good way. it. Okay. And there are people that are like, that's not knitting. That's cheating. That's not what you sew with a sewing machine. Not everything by hand. So come on. <laughs> it's okay. Whatever works for people. Everybody is can good. do their own thing, and it's all good and it's all valid. Yep. And nobody is the I sock love knitting. The place. idea of a sock knitting machine, or one of those other ones for like hats or. I really want to yeah. get the Addy Express yes. King size or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it's called for hats. Oh, mm -hmm. That would be fun. That would be really cool. That would be fun. Okay. All right. Then we really wouldn't need any more hats. Oh, <laughs> I wanted to show this really quick. I got this in the mail. I bought these this week. Oh, they're so cute. By the Gnome Knitter. Oh. I'm sure I'm most of you were following her, but she had an update recently with things that I just was like, I want them all. I restrained myself and I only got two things. But this was the one that was the kicker I had to get. And it is a peppermint. No, no not a peppermint bark. Yeah, a pep um, yeah, whatever. A rainbow peppermint bark heart. But it doesn't want to focus on that because it's focusing on our lovely faces. We could hide <laughs> these beautiful faces. We can't here, hide but... ourselves. <laughs> and then I got... A cup of milk yeah. with an Oreo in it, a candy cane, and a straw. That's oh so God. adorable. It's so cute. And it even says Oreo on it. Does you it? Look at Let me it look close. It. See if my eyeballs so have to. So cute. I, the, oh, wow. That looks great. I held back and only bought two. It was painful. But I got these as stitch that's markers, cute. not progress keepers, because that's something I need more of. Okay, I need. <laughs> That's a place where the excess has not yet gotten ridiculous, <laughs> is what you're saying, right? Yes. 
<laughs> we know, we know. Oh, oh goodness. Uh, yeah, but I'm just imagining like a sweater with all of these different cute things all around it. Okay, or you could just keep them on and knitting jewelry, how we were talking yeah, about. Exactly. And how people are like, do you leave those on? I know people say that all the time when you're knitting in public and you've got stitch markers on. I'm sure people say that to you too. Do you, is that, can, are, is that are those things design? part of the design? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes, it's this just, little Coca-Cola charm and this big potato charm. I'm leaving those on this fall. It's all part of the fun. <laughs> part of the fun is what it is. Uh, it is so fun. It is so fun. All right. It's time for Kindness is Like Sugar segment. All right, it is my turn for Kindness is Like Sugar segment, and this is where we like to share and highlight um, little acts of kindness that we have witnessed or people have done for us. And today I wanted to share um, something sweet that someone has done for me. And I have designed socks that we talked about and am releasing kits for it. And was really just kind of stressed about being able to get them made in time. And I have a very kind friend that said, oh, it would be so fun if I came and helped you with that. By helping, this is the kind of help. Um, lift heavy pans of hot boiling water and carry that around. Wash pans, spin yarn, soak yarn, like that's really really fun <laughs> and she's like that would be fun and she came and spent a whole day with me helping me with yarn and we got quite a lot done in one day and she was just cheerful the whole time like wasn't that lovely and I was like yes it was <laughs> thank you you know like doing the part that is not the fun part and doing it all mm. with a smile and um, I just really appreciated that because more than anything, it was a gift of time and time is precious, a precious commodity that there is never enough of. And so I was so thankful that she was willing to come and offer that gift of time to help me. And then when I was talking about how I need to die more, she's like, you know, I was just talking about, okay, I've got to figure out my schedule. And next thing you know, she was just talking about, oh, okay, well, this is how we could do it. And she's now figured out, like, okay, we're going to do this and this, and we could get that done. You know, like, I didn't even have to ask. She's just planning on, like, how I'm going to help you get that done. Like, just so, so sweet kind. and kind. Um, I'm, just, I'm just thankful for wonderful, kind, generous people who offer their time. So <laughs> the world can be so transactional. It can be so much like, I'll do this for you if you do that for mm -hmm. me. And so when somebody just kind of is selflessly gives you part of themselves, that's a big deal. Yeah. Well, that's I was trying really to give deal. her yarn and she didn't even accept it. Because that wasn't what she was there for. No. <laughs> she wasn't there to get something out of it. She was just there to give of herself. That's yeah, a beautiful very, thing. Very kind. So I, I am thankful for kind and generous friends. Deborah, I need you to get my needle out of my Notions tin right here. I can't pick it up. I was making a funny face earlier because I couldn't grab it. Oh, what? what is that? Why can't you pick <laughs> up? Because my nails. My nails were too long and I just oh, couldn't get it. I don't know. I couldn't get my contacts out the other day. It's not the most annoying It wasn't thing. my nails. It was that we had had really hot wings. <laughs> And Don't I went, stick that finger in your well, eye. I did. And then I was like, ah, my eye. Oh, so my I'm, word. I'm like this, and I'm washing my hands again and again. And then after a while, I tried again. I'm like, no. I can't. It's like, it took a while. And then I finally had to just do it, and my eyes were on fire. And then we had wings the next night. And I was like, I didn't take out my contacts before. 
<laughs> oh no. So we have a friend named Kirk who he had a similar experience. He was cooking and he cut up jalapenos. Oh. He wasn't wearing gloves or anything. And then when he took out his contacts, he just did it so fast. I don't know. He never touched his eye. He just, you know, grabbed him and stuck him in his mm -hmm. contact case and put his, you know, solution in. And then the next day they sat there and marinated. Oh. <laughs> so the next morning he put, put them, them in. And they were on fire. He <laughs> could not. He had to take, of course, immediately take them back out. And he could hardly see for a couple oh, days. Man. So... It's, it's dangerous out there for food. Ooh, good spicy food. Mm. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm not hungry for wings. <laughs> I think I'm about to eat wings today. <laughs> I sent him a message that night too. Money, Money wings. wings. <laughs> uh, I did not go on that negative four to positive four scale. <laughs> Like we are now at a positive seven. Roll me to the car. Actually, I felt like a positive two, but it, it wasn't really. Sometimes you feel like a positive two, though, and then after a while, it continues to expand. <laughs> Actually, what it is, oh. I didn't even think about. So I've done allergy testing or sens food sensitivity testing, and chicken was high on that list. And I oh. completely ignored it because I'm like, oh. I just don't really eat much meat and I don't really care for chicken. So I, it was like out of my mind. I didn't even think about it. And then that's what I remembered. I was like, oh, yeah. And I have had nothing but wings for the last eight days. <laughs> and I'll, so that, of Oops. course, I'm going to feel miserable. So, oh, no. yeah. yeah. Anyways, oh, okay. It was a worthwhile sacrifice, Deborah. I didn't break the yarn. What is wrong with what? me? What? The yarn for the socks? Yes. The I good news is we know exactly what colors they are. So, sock sets <laughs> for my upcoming shop update on November 4th will include a 100 gram skein of gingerbread. Mm -hmm. And I really love this one it's because so overall it has one color, one tone. But when you look at it up close, there's quite a a lot of variation in these golds and browns and tans. It looks and toasted so. like a I nice brown cookie out of the oven. Yes. And 20 grams of this white sparkle. So this is my 80-20 base and this is the same base just with some silver Stellina. And then 10 grams of the pink and 20 grams of this teal because even though I only used nine, I did the the regular size the medium one mm -hmm. and your gauge may vary and you may need 11 and i you did the medium need... size of but I, but i used a different slightly different gauge mm -hmm. and i you i mean i was really close to being yeah. out, so so um it doesn't come with scraps of black but you don't have to use that and i figured you don't need me to wind off eight inches <laughs> i don't know maybe somebody insert does, your but, scrap here um and then i'm planning on releasing just gingerbread on its own as well so if you have your own scraps that you want to use and do different colors you can do that so i am doing just these sock sets and gingerbread for this shop update on thursday and that's all i will be doing um, I had planned to release the Disneyland um, Sock Club, but I think what I'm going to do is actually start that in January because I've just got other things that I'm excited about doing. So if you were waiting for that, that's actually going to be starting in January. That's a great time to start a club, though. Yes. That's I wonderful. just have too many other Christmassy things and stuff that I'm excited to do because I also will be doing the Bon Bon Mini um, mm. sets that will be now for the Christmas holiday season. I did the fall ones and now we're going to be starting up the Christmas season sets. That's so fun. That's so it. fun. Yay. So are you weaving in your end? I am. I'm weaving in ends right now. So I just tied a knot. And now I'm leaving them in. All right. Well, it was only a couple of weeks. Hooray. I know. And we're, amazing. we're like well under two hours this time. Yes. Yes. 
no guarantees for next time. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit. <laughs> yes. We will not be podcasting again until after the wedding. So. Though that's not really far away. That's really not. That's that more like our regular That's schedule. actually true. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> Just don't expect us early is what I'm saying. That'll give us time to work on all the Christmas gifts that we weren't going Yay. to make. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and then I'll be able to show you some of the things from the wedding. Yes. I'll be able to show you the dresses and all the flowers and all the fancies. It'll be awesome. The completed shawl. Okay, you've got your end woven in. Got one more to go and then I'll okay. be all caught up on end weaving. That's but it's the good nice stuff. Part. I love it. <laughs> love these socks. They're fun. Okay, okay. Well, have a good, I don't know. November. November. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know what today is. So. <laughs> have a great November and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.